My name is uh, Madeli Luido. And uh, as the sister said, I'm from Iowa. Originally, I'm from Haiti. You can hear the accent? Yeah. Yeah. And I don't speak English the way you speak English. And I speak less English. So I pray God will give you the good ear, good understanding, to understand my English. He will speak to your heart. And that's it. Nothing else about that. It is a joy to be at Sweetwater. It is a joy to be among friends. I said friends. I didn't expect to see Eddie and Miss D. But fortunately, they are here. And I got my two friends partner in singing. They are down there. I didn't expect to see you too. And then I'm glad to see you. And then you're all my friends. You know, I can't wait for one day we, when we'll be together. Every Sabbath, all the saints will be together. You know, the best thing will be we will never depart. You know, I, I, I can wait for the time when I will remain with my friend singers and then we will sing all the time. You know, I can't wait for the time when there will be no truck accident. There won't be no cancers. There won't be no sickness. It will be joy, joy. Please bow our heads. Dear God, there's nothing we can be. There's nothing we can do without you. At this moment, Lord, we asked for you to send your Holy Spirit to talk to us. We need you more than ever. Please come. Dwell among us. Suit our pain. We pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Last Tuesday, I stayed all day in communication with Canada knowing that there was uh, the ease that was an old pathfinder had she's in her 40s and she's dying with cancer <clears throat> and the last news I received from my other pathfinders all the organs are Affected. Metastatic cancer is all over spray. They had to go in and put a stent in a pillow of the office to allow the stool to go down into the end Because they can do any other procedure. She is in so bad shape. <clears throat> and I remember God all of a sudden when Adam and Eve sinned. Can you imagine God coming down, calling upon Adam and Eve with such a pain? Adam, Adam, where are you? What did you do? You know, I can just picture in my mind 
God saw all the pain that Adam was going to suffer. You know, I, I can imagine in my mind, God saw all the cases, all the sickness, and finally, death. Ask him, Adam, where are you? And the 14th of March, next week, that's going to be four years since I was close to death. Because I have uh, my wife, Colonel Clyde, 99%. God is an excellent doctor. Amen. Jesus is an excellent doctor. And that's why, and I want to apologize, I choose the first song, 253. Because the first song, 253, say, Sweet name, dear name. Amen. I don't know for you if you experience that. Anytime you are on a bad moment, and a crucial moment, and a painful moment, remember, Say Jesus. Amen. You will feel immediately the comfort. I did. I had that. I experienced it for myself and I experienced it for my own children. Today, I propose to talk for about two hours. <laughs> Can I talk for two hours? Is that okay? All right, no, I'm not going to talk for two hours. <laughs> Is that in my habit, talking for two hours? I can only talk for 20, 25 minutes, and that's it. Brothers and sisters, the story of Jesus, reported on uh, John 5, verse 1 to 17, is a unique story reported in the Bible. Only John reported that story. And you all know why they don't put John among the synoptic gospel book. I don't know if I pronounce it right. Yeah. I got it? Okay, thank you. You know, John don't repeat the same story that Matthew, John Mark, and Luke repeat. He got some singular stuff. That mean, which means that John was a really eyewitness. And that's one of the things that put John in the category of beloved, as he said it in the, in the book. The beloved. He knows everything about Jesus. Jesus loved John so much. Jesus loved Peter so much. Jesus loved James so much that he kept them close to him. You know why? Because they are having problems. <laughs> Peter talked too much. He was quick to talk. He thought he know everything when he, while he didn't know nothing. And then John and James, they have a problem. What was their problem? And then Jesus named them, them, thank you, Father Don. They were son of Thomas. You see? Jesus can transform, change somebody, son of thunders and disciple of love. Amen. It's the same John. When you read the book, the Epistles, if I can say it right, he's talking about the love 
Little children love this. Little children talk about love this, love that. Jesus can do the same thing for us today. Let me go right in my story. Waking up in the Jerusalem, our Savior, our Redeemer, he was thinking, what am I going to do today? What's the problem? Why is this my problem today? And he was thinking, he said, you know, I have to go to the temple. I have to go there, but I think I might do a little detour. He was thinking. And then you know what he did? He detoured and he went right across. Because he reported, if you go to the, you do a little bit of geography. And then he reported that there was a pool called Bethesda, right across the temple. And by that pool, there were a lot of important people. They were important. Some of them are blind, lame. They, can, they couldn't do for themselves. And Jesus said, let me do two and let me go there first. Amen. And I have something special to do. Jesus said there was a, a man called Matt. You know, he has a right corner and after me, block for 99%. <laughs> and I have to go in and, and then send it to the ER. Yeah. And then where are they going? They're going to do something. I'm going to do too. I'm not going to go to my home today. Yes. Uh, do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Do you see me? Okay. And Jesus detour and stopped by. You don't mind if I... No. Okay. Jesus stopped by the pool of Bethesda. Because by the pool of Bethesda, there was a young man for 38 years he'd been suffering. For 38 years he suffered a sickness because of his sin. Probably because of the sin of pornography, you know? Probably because he was a liar. You know? Probably he was because he, he used to steal. Probably because he was he used to sell dope. You know, probably because oh you know, one day he he, he didn't listen to his fears. He didn't want to believe that God existed. He doubted about God. But still, seeing his parents training right, and he was sick, he came to the poor of Bethesda. Bringing him there. And Jesus, in his program for the day, in his program for the day, he said, let me, let me stop by. Because that boy, that man, needs me. Yeah. <clears throat> the poor of Bethesda, to give you a backdrop of the story, is the pool that any time the water shakes, the water shakes, and then somebody, the first person who got there, here. He wasn't the virtue of the water. No. He was the faith in God. They believe that the angels can come. The angels come from where? From God and trouble the water and they could, they're going to be healed. Do you want to be here? Do you want to be well? We have a, a lot of sick people here. If you're not sick, let me see your hand. Okay. Now you 
this in. I'm a sick person. 50 years here. Not 38, 50 years. I'm not going to tell you 58 one. Okay? So, brothers and sisters, when we think that we are sick, we've been standing by that pool, by the water, to be healed, to be made whole by Jesus, we need something. We need something. We need to believe that we come here today to be healed by Jesus. I said we need to believe. Yes. Jesus went there and he looked at everyone. And that crippled man, Jesus, I imagine that Jesus bent down and asked him this question. Wow! He was so discouraged. Wow! He was hopeless. Jesus asked him this question. Do you want to be made whole? Mm. I can imagine that his eyes opened. His eyes opened. He said, who asked me this question? What kind of question is this? Mm. And he said, you know, yes, I do want to be whole. But there's a problem. <laughs> Anytime I want to jump in the water, I don't have anybody to carry me over and throw me in the water. Aha! Now we are all sick. You said yes, right? The water is right there. The water for us now is Jesus, right? Yeah. Do you want to jump in that water? Which is Jesus? What's stopping you? Do you want somebody to carry you over and throw you in there? Do, do you understand where I'm coming from? Where do I want to go exactly? We all sick. For some of us, we've been sick for 75 years, 60 years. 58 years, 10 years. We are waiting for somebody. We are waiting for a miracle. The water is there. And then let me give you the good news. We don't need someone to carry us over to dump us in the water. Thank you. We don't need that. The only one thing we need is faith. The only one thing we need is to invite Jesus. Earlier in the Sabbath school lesson, I mentioned that Jesus standing, what he's doing, he's nothing. He's nothing. He's waiting for us to open, to invite him in. He's waiting for us to say, yes, I accept it, Jesus, heal me. Yes, I accept it, Jesus. The guy said, I don't have anybody to take me there. And Jesus looked in the eyes of the guy and said, and Jesus said, pick up your bed and walk. Go. That's it. <laughs> Thank you. Pick up your bed and go. You know, there's one thing I, I put in my note here. Jesus did it. It's not me. It's not my note. Because I can't see it in the 
Desire of ages? Sister White? Jesus then asked the guy, do you believe in still of the day? <laughs> Jesus then asked the guy, do you believe in 1,260. Am I saying it right? Okay. And Jesus didn't ask the guy, <coughs> you are a vegan, right? <laughs> <laughs> you don't eat eggs. You sh thou shalt not eat eggs. <laughs> you know, you, you, you got to be a vegetarian, you know. Thou shalt not eat chicken. Jesus then he asked anyone that, you know, you observe the Sabbath. As a matter of fact, they were there on what day? On the Sabbath. And then instead of Jesus going to the to the Jerusalem temple on the Sabbath, he made a detour. Where did he go again? At the pool. On the Sabbath day, and Jesus was reflecting on that also. I know those masters, I know those rabbis, they're going to criticize me about whatever I'm doing. I'm going to do it for the glory of God. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you know what happened? On the Sabbath day, Jesus asked the guy, pick up your bed and go, like the mother said. And then he picked up his bed and Left. And you know what happened? While he was carrying his bed and his mat, and then some of the rabbi, I would say someone said in the heavens, <laughs> would we'll tell them, Do you know that you're not supposed to carry your bed on the Sabbath? And this is the Sabbath day. You know? Stop that. And then put, who tell you you can do that? And he stopped and said that, <clears throat> are you stunned, surprised to see me walking? Mm. That was me by the pool. Mm. I couldn't do anything. Are you surprised? Yeah. What do you care about me carrying my bed for? <laughs> <laughs> what do you care about me carrying my bed? Do you know one thing? <laughs> The guy, to tell you that he didn't even know who was Jesus. <laughs> the guy who told me, pick up my bed and what? What's the guy? What's the guy telling me to pick up my bed and what? So, if he can do that miracle, making me whole, heal me, he asked me to carry my bed and go, that's what I'm carrying my bed. <laughs> Don't you worry about me carrying my bed. And, then he's, and he's carrying his bed. I imagine that guy's carrying his bed. And he's running with all those crowd. And then his name, he, you know, he got in place. And then he saw Jesus. And he said, Oh, he, 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 that is who he is. He's going over there. That's him telling me carrying my bed. If you got a grudge, if you got something with him, go ahead and. Sorry. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot of problems. Sometimes I can't even breathe. You know, I can't even breathe, right? Sometimes I have a pain in my back. I can't even carry myself away, right? but I'm worried about me eating. Chicken. Mm. You know, I'm worrying about sister so and so talking about something. You see what? What I need to worry about <coughs> is my relationship with God. Amen. Amen. My relationship with God. And uh, the other thing I need to worry about is my relationship with Miss D. My relationship with my sister Pat. My relationship with my everybody in here. 
But Jesus didn't ask the guy, do you have faith? No. Jesus looked into his eyes and said, pick up your penny, walk. The guy did not Jesus, but Jesus knew the guy. He did not Jesus. Jesus knew him. Don't you think the same thing happened to you? God said, I don't know the project I have on you. A project to prosper you, not to fail you. In Jeremiah, right? Eh? Do you think that God knows you? There's one thing I know. And I'm going to close because. I'm going to tell you, brothers and sisters, with the same faith we have today, we can be made whole. And if you go home and you can read it, in Desire of Ages, page 203, you will understand that. We have the same opportunity. In the eyes of Jesus, we are all the same. There is no such thing that you've been seven diabetes for 50 years. There is no such thing you have, you've been uh, 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 seven diabetes for 80 years. No, there is no such, no such thing like, okay, because you, you, you went to, the, to Harvard University or you went to, to, to a Ivy League. There is no such thing because you have the knowledge or because you go so and so. No, no, there's no such thing. There's no such thing because of the color of your skin. No. No, 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 no. We all got the same value in the eyes of God. Amen. Do you want to be here? Way in the water. Way in the water, children. Way in the water. I will ask something. God is troubling the water now. God is troubling the water now. Jump in. Let me see in your hand. Who wants to tell Jesus? I want to jump in your water. Can you stand? If you really believe, if you really believe, can you come forward? There, there is enough space for everyone. Enough space for everyone. Jesus is here today. I feel it. And I know it. He has a bone. He's going to heal everyone here today. Do you believe that? Yeah. Wherever you feel like you have a pain, tell Jesus right now. Jesus is the doctor, the excellent one. And I really believe he's still doing more. Let us kneel. And we're going to pray. Dear Jesus, I don't know why.
But I know something. There is power in your name. There is power in your name. You can heal the sick. There is power in your name. You can raise the dead still. There is power in your name, Lord. You can calm the storm in us. Power in your name. You can calm the pain. Power in your name. You can heal our cancer or sin. Please, Lord. Come down. Touch us. Heal us. Lord, we love you. We praise you. We worship you for listening to our prayer. Because we ask in your name. Amen. Amen, amen.